Hello everyone. My name is Sachin Hisaria and in this video we will be discussing about practical approach for IS and GRC audit. So before we start our discussion, first let me introduce myself. So my name is Sachin Hisaria and I am working as a senior IT consultant in consulting firm. So I look after all the IT related assignment, be it a cyber security audit, system audit, system development, life cycle audit, BCP, DR audit. So there are a lot of other IT audit which I look after. Okay, so I have a total nine plus years of experience in IT audit field. And uh, from training perspective, I am very passionate speaker. I love to teach people. I love to uh, train the people and I am a CAG M panel trainer and I regularly deliver uh, lectures for CISA, ISO 27001 and other IT related certification. So this is a brief uh, about my profile. Okay, so now let's start our topic. So now we will be discussing why to enroll in this course. Why do you need to enroll in this course? Let's see what are the point, what are the points that are critical. So basically, once you obtain your certification, like once you are CISA qualified, once you are ISO certified, so even after obtaining the certification, you only gain the theoretical knowledge about the concept, okay? Whatever concepts are there in IT audit field, you will come to know about the theoretical aspect of it. In this course, we will be dis discussing about the practical aspect of each the domain. Okay, so we will tell you how to do audit practically. When you go on the field at that time, what you need to do, how you will verify the thing, how you will ask the data requirement. So all these things we will be discussing in this course. So the main objective of this course is to bridge the gap between the theoretical knowledge and the actual practice knowledge. This is one objective. Similarly, in this course, you will get the hands-on experience of IT audit. Okay. Now, the next topic is course approach. In this course, what, uh, what approach do we follow? This we will be discussing in this slide. So basically, first we will start uh, our each topic with the concept understanding. So suppose we are discussing any topic. So first we will understand the concept of that topic. Okay, the basic concept of the topic. Once the concept understanding is done, then we will review the policies and procedure documents around that dom domain. So as you uh, might all aware that whatever domain is there, whatever uh, process is there, organization need to document first policies and procedure around that area. Basis on the policy and procedure only, they will follow the uh, processes in actual. So first we will review that policy procedure. For this, I will give you the dummy data. Okay, I will give you the dummy data. I will give you the dummy policy. Then you have to go through the policies and then we will prepare our data requirement list. So suppose if you are from auditing background, then you will all understand this term. Whenever you do audit, first you need to prepare the data request for the same. Correct. So in this course also, we will prepare the data requirement first. Once the data requirement is ready, I will give you the dummy data for analysis. Okay, I will give you the dummy data for analysis. As a participant, you have to analyze that data. Okay, basis on analysis, you have to identify the risk and controls. And you will document this risk and control in the RCM document. Okay, so I will share you the format of RCM. You will document all the risk and control in the RCM document. Basis on this only, you will prepare the gap summary report. And after gap summary report, we will prepare our final report. So this, this is the approach that we will be following in our course. Okay, so this approach we will be follow for each the domain. Whatever domain that we will be discussing, we will discuss all the domains in this approach only. So this is about the course approach. Okay, then... The next is the target 
audience who can attend this course so basically you, anyone who is interested in information system and grc audit if there is anyone who want to switch their career into the is and grc audit they can attend this course okay anyone like if there are financial auditor who want to shift into the it audit so they can also attend the course if there are any beginners and the fresher in information system audit they can also attend this course similarly suppose if there are qualified person like there are cisa there are cism iso certified people who have learned the uh, theoretical aspect of I, uh, is uh, audit but they want to gain some practical knowledge they can also attend this course so this is about the target or audience who can attend the course okay now the next slide is after completion of this course what participant can do so basically once you have attended this course you will be able to develop implement and execute the is audit independently so our main purpose is once our candidate complete this course they can attend or they can execute uh, the entire uh, is audit from start to end independently so this is our main objective of this course so once you will attend the complete course you can able to do this very easily okay similarly you would be able to prepare the gap assessment report draft report and the final report so suppose if you have given any is audit assignment as a fresher if you have done this course uh, with the help of this course you can prepare the gap assessment report draft report and the final report so this is the main objective of this course similarly once you attend this course in this course we will give you some reference material like data request sheet for each domain we will be preparing the data request sheet okay i will show you the template as well uh, how we will prepare the data request list and the rcm also so for each domain we will prepare our rcm which is risk control matrix so this document will be a very much helpful for you when you will actually do the audit okay so once you will complete this course you will be having the data requirement sheet you will be having your rcm so this you can refer at the time of doing actual is audit so this will be a very helpful material for you after completion of this course this you can refer even after completion of this course so so this is the main objective of the course and the participant uh, what participant will get after the completion of course okay now so basically now i will give you one demo also how we are going to discuss each topic in our course so i will give you some demo as well so for example suppose we are discussing the business impact analysis here what we are discussing there is one term in uh, business continuity planning which is bcp and drp in bcp and drp there is one important topic which is business impact analysis so what is business impact analysis business impact analysis is an essential component of business continuity planning now you are thinking what is this business continuity plan so suppose in case of any disaster be it a natural disaster or be it a man made disaster in case of disaster your business got hampered you would not be able to do certain activity during the uh, disturb disruption so for that only you prepare your business continuity plan that in case of disruptions how we will continue our business okay so to prepare the business continuity planning first you will prepare the business impact analysis report in business impact analysis we will determine and evaluate the impact of disruption okay on our critical business processes so as a part of bia first we will identify what are the critical processes there in the organization okay first we will identify the critical processes and we will identify the impact of disruption on that particular critical processes so this is about bia okay 
so in bia we will determine the criticality of business activity okay now what are the uh, there are some other important aspect of the bia like in the bia you will determine the uh, processes which are recovered as a priority okay which process will recover which process we need to recover uh, on a priority basis this we will determine from business impact uh, analysis report okay and in bia the involvement of senior management is very critical okay so this is the theory part of the bi okay this is the theory part of the bi now let's see what are the method of information gathering like in bi we discussed that we need to collect lot of informations from the process owner okay to determine the criticality of the business process to determine which processes we need to recover first to continue the business now how we will gather this information what are the method of gathering the information this we will be discussing here so there are three method of gathering information first is a questionnaire approach what is a questionnaire approach so in questionnaire approach you will prepare the detailed set of question and you will circulate this questionnaire to the process owner okay so this is questionnaire approach then similarly there is second approach which is interview approach in this you will be doing interview of the key business uh, like the owner of the process you will be doing interview then similarly we have third approach which is meeting approach in this approach you will holding the meeting with the process owner okay so this is the theory part of the bia okay now in business impact analysis there are two term which is very critical okay which is very critical the main purpose of doing the bia is to identify the recovery time objective and the recovery point objective this two terminologies are very important in a bia okay now let's see what is this rto and rpo with the example okay first i will explain you the concept of rto and rpo with the example and then we will see the theory part so basically suppose the current time is 10 p 10 am okay what is current time current time is 10 am at 1159 what happened there is some disaster just assume that there is some disaster which has impacted your business okay and as a part of your process you are taking backup on a regular one hour basis okay so what is your backup frequency suppose your backup frequency is a one hour in every one hour you are taking the backup so suppose if disaster occur at 1159 when did you uh, when did you have taken your last backup so suppose you have taken your last backup at a 11 am okay so after this disaster how much is your data loss so whatever data that has been processed between 11 to 1159 this data you would not be able to recover because backup was scheduled to run uh, on 12 pm before that only disaster occurs this is am okay 1159 am now so Uh, how much how much is the data loss so we can say that data loss is around 1 hour we can say that we have lost our data and the data lost was approximate 1 hour so whatever process that has been done during this 1 hour this data you would not be able to recover so this is your data loss in it terminology we call this data loss as a recovery point objective are you getting my point guys in it terminology we call this as, is as a recovery point objective similarly after disaster suppose you have recovered all your businesses around 1 pm okay so between 12 p 12 pm to 1 pm you have not done any business process you have not done any uh, activity during this this particular time so that means this is your system down time in this one hour you are not able to run your business okay so this is called as a recovery time objective 
I hope you are getting my point. So basically, recovery time objective and recovery point objective. Recovery time objective stands for day system downtime, and recovery point objective stands for the data loss that has been occurred due to disaster. So these are the two terminologies of uh, BIA. The main purpose of doing this BIA activity to identify the RTO and RPO. I hope you are getting my point. Okay, we have discussed the example now. Now quickly we will see the definition also. So basically, what is RTO? RTO is measure uh, of user's tolerance to system downtime. How much downtime a user can afford? This is RTO. Correct. And what is RPO? RPO is a the measure of user's tolerance to data loss okay so this is the definition of rpo and rto now guys through the slides we have discussed about the business impact analysis correct we have discussed the theory part of bia how we what is a bia how we will gather information in a bia and what is the purpose of bia so the main purpose is to calculate the rpo and RTO. So this is just a theory part of it. Okay. Now we will see how this BIA is actually prepared in the organization. For this, I will share my screen and I will show you the template of BIA. This is what we do in our course. Okay. After teaching you each topic, I will also show you how this particular thing is done practically. Okay, the main fundamental thing of this course is to understand each and everything from the practical aspect. Okay, so now we have discussed the BIA in theoretical part. Now let's see how the BIA is prepared in the organization. So as you are, uh, as my Excel sheet is already visible to everyone, guys. So in this Excel sheet, you can see the format of BIA. Okay, how organization prepares the BIA. So we have discussed that in BIA, we will be identifying the critical activity. So suppose we are taking here the example of material master management. So we are saying that this is a critical activity, correct? This is the critical activity. Now for this activity, we are determining the RPO and RTO. Okay. So as you can see, this is the format. First, we will mention the process name, what activity we are doing as a part of this process. What are the application dependent on this process? Now let's see how we will calculate the RPO and RTO. This is very important. As you can see here, it is an impact category. Impact category is given. In theory, we have discussed that we will determine the impact of each business critical process to determine the recovery priority. So here we are calculating the impact. Now in impact, you are seeing these numbers. Okay. Now there is another question. What is this number? From where do we get this number? For this, we have to refer the definition matrix. So in definition matrix, we have determined the criticality. Suppose if I give uh, any, like any, uh, suppose in this case, we are saying that financial impact is five. Now, what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? That means if suppose that process is not the, done, there is a very major effect on the organization's financial point of view. Okay. From financial point of view, there is very major impact for this particular process. So for each processes you have to give some impact value considering the financial impact okay considering the what would be the operational impact if that that this process is not done if this process is not done what would be the legal impact what would be the impact on my interested party and what is the reputational impact okay so this is something which is a judgment of the user who is handling the process Okay, suppose if I am handling the process, 
this is my judgment how i will give the impact value to each the impact category okay so basis on my judgment i will give the impact and i will calculate the average impact value okay once this average impact value is calculated i will determine the business process criticality how much this business process is critical whether it is very critical like high medium or low for this also we will again go to our uh, this matrix and here we will see the criticality of the business okay so if i am saying that it is high that means my uh, impact would be if suppose this process is not done the impact would be high okay now if i am saying that impact would be high then what what is my rto so rto also i have defined here that suppose if your impact is high that means you have to recover that process within 4 to 24 hours okay you have to recover your process within 4 to 24 hours so this is what we have calculated this is what we have achieved through the business impact analysis okay similarly for this process we will also determine the rpu okay how much data loss that we can afford if this process is not done okay guys so basically this is the template of bi i hope you are getting my point so in in this course also what we will be doing first we will be discussing each concept from theory perspective then we will be seeing how this uh, how this is actually done in the real life with the templates with the policies and procedures and then i will share you the dummy data i will ask you to do working and then you have to share me the findings okay so this is how we we will be uh, doing the entire course okay now let me summarize our discussion whatever we have discussed till now let's summarize the same through the revision okay so basically in this half an hour discussion we have discussed about business impact analysis okay now what is business impact analysis so basically in the business impact analysis we will be identifying the critical critical business processes correct first we will identify what are the critical business processes is there basis on the criticality we will give priority to the processes which processes needs to recover first okay priority to the processes which process you will be recovering first in case of disaster okay now basis on the priority you will calculate two things one is a recovery point objective one is a recovery point objective similarly you will calculate the recovery time objective now what is recovery point objective recovery time object okay now what is rpo rpo stands for how much data loss the organization can afford in case of disaster okay in case of disaster how much data loss organization can afford similarly rto stands for recovery uh, time objective that means how much downtime how much downtime organization can afford in case of disaster why we are doing this we are doing this so that in case of actual disaster we are very much well prepared okay and we can plan our backup we can plan our alternative recovery sites basis on this entire business impact analysis correct okay so this is what we have discussed uh, till now so this is just one topic guys okay this is just a one topic similarly we will be discussing a lot of topic during this course we will be uh, approach as i i have already told you we first we will discuss the theory and the concept part 
then we will review the uh, policies and procedures. So basically, basis on this BIA, we will be preparing our business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning. Okay, so we will review that. Then we will prepare our initial data requirement list. Then we will review some dummy data. We will identify our observations. We will prepare the gap summary report. Okay. So this is how we will discuss uh, entire concept during this course. Okay. I hope that gives you a clarity about my course. Okay. So this is all guys. This is all uh, for as of now. Uh, okay, so to register this course, you can uh, visit our website and you can uh, uh, visit the Cyber Soldiers website to register on this course. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, let's see, we'll, we'll, we'll meet uh, during the course. Okay, bye-bye and thank you guys. Thank you.